Hello and welcome to The Day Ahead. It's Thursday, October the 20th. I'm Andrew Gagan. Well, global equity markets have snapped their recent rally. Wall Street turned lower as Treasury yields climbed and cautious earnings forecasts prompted investors to reassess risk. The rise in bond yields weighed on rate-sensitive sectors such as real estate and tech, with mega-cap growth stocks Microsoft and Amazon falling. The energy sector finished positively as crude prices surged. Shares in Tesla tumbled around 7% after the bell, reporting third quarter revenue which missed Wall Street estimates, with the electric car maker delivering fewer vehicles than expected, driving concerns about softening demand. Abbott Laboratories tumbled after reporting lower than expected growth in its international medical sales, while also facing headwinds from the strong US dollar and supply challenges in China. And Netflix shares continued their ascent after attracting uh, new, more new subscribers than forecast. Procter & Gamble and Travelers Companies both rose on better than expected quarterly profits. Well, the cost of living crisis is worsening in the UK, with food prices pushing inflation back into double digits. Consumer prices increased 10.1% in annual terms in September, slightly above forecasts. The figure will put more pressure on the Bank of England to step up its interest rate hikes while embarking on quantitative tightening, confirming it will begin selling government bonds at the beginning of next month. Meanwhile, Eurozone consumer inflation was marginally lower in September, with prices rising 1.2% month on month, taking the annual rate to 9.9%. And in the US, home building fell more than expected in September, with new starts dropping 8.1% as mortgage rates climbed to 20-year highs and building material bottlenecks to lay projects. And the Fed's Beige Book, which surveys business activity, indicated that the economy grew modestly and inflation continued to be elevated. That's reflected in comments by Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, who said that he remains concerned about the tight labour market and that underlying inflation pressures probably haven't peaked yet, saying, I've seen very little evidence in my region that the labour market is softening. The number one issue I hear from businesses, small and large, is that they're struggling to find workers, how they're having to pay wages to keep employees and to attract employees. A sell-off in US government bonds pushed the benchmark 10-year Treasury yield to its highest level since 2008, and the two-year yield jumping 12 points to a 15-year high of more than 4.5%. Hotter than expected UK inflation data and looming recession fears weighed on the British sterling, which helped support the greenback against a basket of world currencies. The US dollar index rising more than half a percent, touching a 32-year peak against the yen, prompting speculation of government intervention. And ASX futures are pointing to a negative start to the session locally, down around seven-tenths of a percent. Global oil prices jumped around 3% on data, which showed US crude inventories fell unexpectedly last week. Iron ore futures fell slightly, while base metal prices were mixed. And that US dollar strength weighed on gold, sending prices of the precious metal down 1.4% to a three-week low. And crypto is trading lower in line with equities. On the data front today, Australia's unemployment rate plus uh, overnight the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. That is your day ahead. I'll see you again tomorrow.